Well, good morning, everyone. You guys got to see us out. Good to see everybody out. It's always great to be around. Mine are like it. Mine like it. Mine like it. Yeah, we're going to start out with the first selection this morning. I got these. Like it. Oh, my God. 
Welcome to the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Steve Van Meter, your senior minister. And hello out in Zoom land. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. We know again, you have a lot of places you could be this morning, but you found yourself here. This is the place you're, you're supposed to be. Your soul has drawn you here. We have a wonderful program for you this morning. You sit back, relax, enjoy the spiritual experience that you have set up for yourself. We're going to do what we do every Sunday, and that's read our vision mission statement. It's up on the screen. It says, We are an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. We have some announcements, and our very first special announcement is that we, um, you know, we, we, we did our birthday thing at the beginning, but we had a very special birthday, and uh, Jeanette turned yeah. 101 years old. 101. And we're going to sing her happy birthday. to bring your dog to keep them on a leash next to you and if they do get out of hand we'll ask you to put them in the car it's cool enough they can stay in the car now so if, if they're interrupting the service or somebody's having a challenge with them we will need to put them away so that we don't bother someone else's spiritual experience so i appreciate we we, we love having our dogs but this is the spiritual center we're here for the the, the human spirit <laughs> or the spiritual spirit and we love the dogs, but uh, we need to keep them in check. Holiday giving tree for the local foster kids uh, back on the back counter is uh, many of the cards have already been picked up. And thank you so much. Um, we There are three requests on each card for a child. If you cannot find the, that exact item or similar to those items, then any age-appropriate gift is always appreciated. You do not have to get all three gifts either. Just one is fine. That's We're just giving you a variety. Um, but if you want to get all three, you can. Um, and they're unwrapped gifts um, to be handed in by Sunday, November 26th. You can bring them here. We'll pile them in the corner here or in the back room if there's too many, and we will give those to the program at that time, but you have to have them back here unwrapped, which is a lot easier, um, by the 26th, okay? That's the, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, okay? Next, uh, events. The GPCSL holiday party, December 15th at 5 p.m. Um, and we will have a sign up next week I have it in my computer, but I didn't print it out yet. So I will print it out and have it here by next week. Um, this year, just dinner will be a $10 donation. If you don't have the $10, you're still going to be here. We're just asking to offset our cost um, because we didn't have our um, annual auction this year. So we're doing it a little differently. Um, bring your favorite side dish to share. We'll also have an optional gift exchange with a $20 value limit. Please bring this gift wrapped. So the kid's <laughs> gift is unwrapped. This gift is wrapped. If you're confused, I understand. Just figure it out. If you bring it unwrapped, we'll wrap it for you. Whatever. <laughs> Bucky and Paula have stepped forward to uh, coordinate this event. So if you have questions about this or want to help with setup or cleanup, because we need those little elves to pull this off, please see uh, Paula or Bucky 
And we thank them so much for coming forward to assist us with this project. Um, and, you know, we just, we just love our parties. <laughs> no, we, we just have such a good time. Uh, classes. The Angel Discussion Group continues for one more week. Join our final Angel Discussion Group, led by Nancy Yonnelly, on Tuesday at 1.30 in the LEC. It's the last one, so if the angels haven't spoken to you yet, you have one more chance to speak to them. <laughs> so please come and have that experience. Um, save the date. Reverend Steve, me, will be offering a free foundations class, and it's gonna be Friday, uh, starting January 5th from 1 to 4. It's a 10-week class, and there is a $45 registration fee. You say free, and then you charge a fee. <laughs> it's usually $200. I'm waiving that fee. It's usually $245. I'm waiving the $200 fee. The $45 is just to register you so you get a certificate with the home office. If you have a challenge with that, come see me and we will work it out. And it, it, it can be paid by the end of the class. So if you, you know, whatever, $45 times 10, if you, you know, 450 a class, yeah, you could probably, five bucks a class is what it costs. There's also a, around week five, there's a Saturday where we do a workshop that is the fear to faith workshop and the uh, treatment workshop where it's, it's teaching you the five steps of spiritual mind treatment. And you will need to purchase a science of mind textbook because that's what we use. Um, and it's open to all. So please come join us. If you want to enrich, consider this your golden ticket to dive deeper into the profound wisdom of the science of mind philosophy. <laughs> if you have questions, please come see me and we can't wait. Um, the metaphysical book study continues from 9 to 9.45 in the LEC, and we're studying the Science of Mind textbook. Our meditation group is continuing from 9.50 to 10.05. Um, and if you do come in late, um, they're going to they're gonna start closing the door at um, 9.50 for the people that do make it on time. If you come in late, it kind of disrupts the, <coughs> the ambiance of the group. So we'll just ask you, if you come in late, just to come over here and have your own personal meditation in our um, daisy room. We have a daisy room right here behind that curtain that you can go and have some time by yourself. But we're asking that if you do come in late, that you don't disrupt the group. Because, you know, when you're in meditation, people come in, and you know how that goes. So we're just asking you to honor the sacredness of that space. Um, and I think that completes our announcements. I want to thank you all for being here this morning. And Dave was going to uh, lead us as we stand up and sing, We Are One. We can do that.
morning. Good morning. I'm Deborah Perdue, and it's my honor and pleasure to be here. And let's start with saying the gratitude together. Deeply grateful to realize that the Savior is evident everywhere, and so it is. If you want to know what a practitioner is and what we do, there's a goldenrod colored bright yellow uh, insert in, in the seat back in front of you. And that tells everything you want to know about the practitioners completely. <laughs> and also our phone numbers are there as well. And we love to pray with and for you. And today our table practitioner is Paula Peterson. Thank you. And um, you can also, so Paula can lead you, direct you to a practitioner for a quick prayer and might do it herself if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and let's uh, raise our hands if we're available for prayer after the service. Quite a few of us are here, yay. Okay, and another option is to fill out a blue prayer request, which is in the seat back as well. Yellow. 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 Because yes. the other one's not, someone stole the other one. We all know this stuff. <laughs> so you just fill it out and you can either put it in the prayer box or in the offertory when it comes by. And the blue one is for demonstrations and that's when you've uh, manifested what you asked for. We love to hear about that as well. And you can also put it online at grantspasscsl.org. So let us pray for you. We pray for a week. So if you want it to keep going, put it in every week for a while, like some people do, and that's great. Thank you. The flowers today are from Jeanette. Oh, and she told me that these are some of the many, many bouquets she got for her, her 101st birthday. Awesome. Thank you, Jeanette, for sharing them with us. If anyone is here for the first time, please raise your hand. We'd like to give you a welcome packet. The good news about that is that people are always coming back. <laughs> so we've got a steady, strong group here. Yay. Uh, remember to turn off or mute your cell phone, please. And let's read the prayer together. And I also want to say welcome back, Kaylin. Okay. I know this is not something that is separate from other parts of my life. I honor the spirit in every single moment. It is within me and all around me, and so it is. So we're going to sing I Am Love. Please stay seated. <laughs> Science of Mind magazine article, I quoted a beautiful <coughs> song written by Peter Mayer, Everything is Holy Now. Faith Rivera sang it at the CSL in Medford when I attended long ago, and it made a huge impression on me. Um, I invite you to look up both renditions on YouTube. They're amazing. As my life has gone on, getting wiser as I have aged, mostly, I feel and know that everything is holy and sacred and that definitely includes the mundane in life. 
I honestly wasn't so sure when I was younger. So here are some of the lyrics from that beautiful song. This morning outside I stood and saw a little red winged bird shining like a burning bush, shining like a scripture verse. It made me want to bow my head. I remember when church let out, how things have changed since then, because everything is holy now. It used to be a world half there, heaven's second rate hand-me-down, but now I walk with a reverent air, because <clears throat> everything is holy now. And this is another verse from it. Wine from water is not so small, but an even, an even bigger magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, but finding where there isn't one. When holy water was rare at best, it barely wet my fingertips. But now I have to hold my breath like I'm swim swimming in a sea of it. I used to see a world half there, heaven's second rate hand-me-down, but I walk with a reverent air because everything is holy now. So I invite us all to just let that seep into your, our conscious and consciousnesses and realize that everything is sacred, everything is holy now. And I'll call, I'll let, I'll let you know when the time is up. And as we come back from this meditation, I absolutely know that everything is holy now, that this Center for Spiritual Living is holy and sacred, and that each of us is holy and sacred within it. And that includes the Zoom people too. I feel the love and the peace and the joy and the connections and the sacred sharing within our community. And I, I know we are so blessed. Thank you, God. And so it is. And so it is. So it's time for more special music by Dave and then Reverend Steve's talk. Well, good morning, everyone. It was a song that we always used to sing here at the CSL. And that was a song called <laughs> Sacred Love. I need to bring it back for you.
Thanksgiving? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Right? Sure. I can eat. I can eat. <laughs> well, our November theme is the mundane, the sacred, the profane, and the oh my. <laughs> you can take my mic down just a little bit. That'd be great. Thank you. We're, we have a new system and we're trying all sorts of things out, so it might sound a little funny. So today we're going to tackle the sacred. You usually don't tackle the sacred. Let me rephrase that. We're going to express the sacred. You know, often the sacred is seen as something separate or set apart from our everyday life. You know, we're, we're like, we only go into the sacred when we do, you know, scientific prayer or we, we come on Sundays and that's the sacred time. And that's, it is the sacred time, but it's not, you're never not sacred. The, the universe, divinity doesn't like turn itself off, um, you know, Saturday through Monday or something like that. It's always on. Dedicated or set apart, highly valued and important. That's what sacredness is. And that's what our lives should reflect completely. What if we could approach this sacredness from a new angle, from a new viewpoint? What if instead of being seen as something reserved for certain times of the year or certain days of the week, that it was all sacred and understood as the sacredness of life itself? Um, there's something to be said about when you come into spirituality and you start to see everything is sacred, everything changes. You can't change one part of your life and it not affect everything else. You know, some people come in because they had a relationship challenge, or maybe they had a physical ailment, a health challenge, or maybe they have a block in their creative flow and maybe their business is not flourishing. <laughs> but those are just the those are just the bait to get you to come in. Those are just the things that the infinite puts in your life so that you'll walk in here or to where you found your sacredness. Because really your paycheck it's just to get you to come into work. 
right? <laughs> but the actual sacredness is in the job you do. And a byproduct of that sacredness is you get paid. The work that you do in this world is so sacred that you could never charge enough for it. You could never be paid enough spiritual coin because your life is the sacredness that you're seeking. So the things that brought you forth are not the actual things that you're supposed to be doing. They're the, they're the kind of way we get you in. The sacred is found in all things because it is all things. There's not a spot where God, God, is, is, not. Not. God is not. There's not sacredness and unsacredness. There's all sacredness and a lack of awareness of the sacredness. That's what truly is. The adventure is in our ability to open our awareness to this reality. And, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here that most of you have found out that everything is sacred. And that's why you find yourself here on Sunday mornings, because you want to share that sacredness with other like-minded sacred people. Sacredness can be found in both the expected and the unexpected. And sometimes it's in the most unexpected times in our lives. When something has gone terribly sideways and we go what the heck is going on in my life until we start looking for the sacredness within it and we say okay this too is good this too is god and i demand to see the blessing in this right here and right now and be careful when you make a demand on the universe you ever stomp your foot at the universe because when it stomps back <laughs> you may have some reverberations. I'm just knowing that that's a good reverberation in your life. Our, away, our, our awareness of the infinite leads us on a path of self-discovery and an understanding that we are inexplicably connected to this presence. The presence, the all that is, is the sacred. It is who and what you are. The sacredness of the divine decided to express, and here you are. You are divinity made manifest. We know that the sacredness is not something found in a far off dream or even something that is separate from us all. Instead, the sacredness can be found in everything that exists. If only we can attune our attention to this avenue of awareness. You know, it is in those challenges that, that we feel less than sacred. You know, those, those times that are meant to be the most sacred. That's why when we look back, we can say, you know, that was a really sacred time in my life. But at the time, I was so in distracted by what was happening, I didn't see how sacred and beautiful it truly was. And it's, it happens. It's, it's, it's called life. Ernest Holmes in his book, Love and Law said, there is not a day in my life that goes by that I do not take the time to unify myself in consciousness with big things to think I am one with all activities, all industries, all commerce, etc., etc., and just feel that through reaching out and encompassing the largest fields of activity of the world, then you are the one with the infinite stars in the heaven, and that is, and that is to see things rightly. You are the stars in, in the heaven. You are truly made of star stuff. You know, my mom used to tell me that. You're made of star stuff. And I would always go, oh, thanks, mom. And she's good. As I got older, she'd say, no, really, you're, 
your DNA is part of the stars. The stars has the same DNA that you do. You're, you're created out of that same particle. When we're able to move past the surface of things, we begin to see sacredness transformed into the everyday activity of our lives. That sacredness is our divine connection. It's in the little things. It's in driving here to church or to the center. You know, it is easy for us to see the sacred in the reflective practices we do. You know, when I, at the end of this talk, go into a, a spiritual mind treatment, you know, some people say, oh, that was so sacred. I'm like, you missed the talk. <laughs> but it is in both. And when we can see it in everything that we do, we have made a divine connection and we are living the dream. We truly are living the dream right now. The connection that is felt during these moments of deep reflection and inner work can be intense. In these moments, the reality of our own divinity and connection to all that is becomes highlighted. When was the last time you felt that connection so deeply that it moved you to tears or to laughter in such a way that you, you actually got what I call God bumps? You know, when, you, when the hair stands up on your arm because something happened in your life that was like there was no other way to look at it but that divine connection. It's something powerful, like some uh, synchronicity happened. Have you ever had something that was like so put in your life, you know, a sign, you got a sign, you got the sign, <laughs> that you were like, whoa, something else is happening here. Those are the times. <clears throat> But what if we could make all of the times of our life that time? Now, it might take away from when those times actually happen. But if you were more aware of those times, you could live in that practice. A practitioner chooses to do. A practitioner is someone who has dedicated their lives to practicing the awareness of the presence what they believe divine is to them. And you get to decide what that looks like to you. The reality is that this connection can be felt not only during these contemplative times, but just as easily walking in nature, dancing to our favorite music, or engaging in meaningful conversation, or playing your bass. <laughs> or doing algebra, if that's your thing, or, or doing your taxes, if that's your thing. You can find the sacred, and I would invite you to look for the sacred in those places that seem so unsacred. Because if you can take just that moment and connect, something will show itself to you, and you'll go, hmm, there it is. That is why I'm here. That's why I'm alive. <laughs> Such examples can serve as a conduit for that divine connection. It is that sacred connection that is the sacredness of who and what we are. And when those moments shine through, those moments help us step beyond the veil to look at something differently. You know, maybe you've had some tragedy happen in your life. You know, we're all going to have something happen. It's part of the experience. But what if just after we have that experience of the upset, we look for the divine? Maybe even while, if you're conscious, aware enough, while it's happening, you know that this is your sign to go into prayer. 
And the sooner that we can make that connection and go, you know what? This two is good. This two is God. I demand to see the blessing in this right here and right now. We move closer and sooner to that divinity being activated in our lives. You know, it's always on. It's always there. But we're not always aware of it. Because, you know, we get distracted. You know, you put the news on. I love what Phil said today. The noose, the noose on. <laughs> Him and I, we talk words and we love that stuff. You know, because there's so much meaning in words that we misinterpret. We miss, we miss the mark. We're missing the mark all the time. That's why we wake up every morning and have a cup of tea or coffee or whatever we juice, whatever we do, and we rethink our lives. Every day we reinvent ourselves. We don't have to be the same person that spilled the milk yesterday. We can clean it up today because it's gone sour overnight. You're going to want to clean that up. Living in the sacred as a mindset. What if? What if everything was part of the divine message to you? That if the divine were to stand in front of you with a card and hand it to you, it would say, what you're doing right now is exactly what you should be doing. You are perfectly exactly where you're supposed to be. Doesn't that feel great just to kind of relax, you know, and go, I'm okay. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm, you know, whatever has happened to you happened. It brought exactly the experience that was needed to wake yourself up. And here you are. Now you can decide to either be really ticked off about it or it can be a guide to your highest experience in life. It's your choice. Now, I, it would take the consciousness of a saint to live in that awareness all the time. But can't we strive for a little bit of that? Can't we like look at those mundane moments and go, I see you in there, God. I know you're in there. You can't hide from me. The very nature of our brain is to label and categorize. You know, we want to put it somewhere. We want to say, this is good, this is bad, this is indifferent. But what if it's all good? What if it's all good? It can take quite a bit of unlearning and interpretation to step out of this evolutionary marvel. We can make steps towards developing a new mindset, a new paradigm, a new worldview that begins to look far beyond the surface of the appearance of things and see the truth that's hidden underneath, the beauty and the awareness of just being alive. You've done it. You made it onto this planet. Whatever you do with it is up to you. You can curse it, or you can bless it. It's yours. And you know your kids, if you have kids, <clears throat> your whole job was to get them onto the planet. You did it. Now it's on them. <laughs> you know, if they make it sweet, that's their experience. If they make it challenging, that's their experience. You can't change that. Can you love them enough to let them go? Can you love yourself enough to be okay with where you're at? This new shift in framework creates an expansive view for ourselves of others and the world around us. It calls us to lean into life a little bit and be okay with it. To operate from a new vantage point, to explore the sacred in both the expected and the unexpected ways. You know, it's when you're sitting at that stoplight and you're wishing it would turn green and you're looking at the other one. When is it going to happen? That you've been given a moment to pause. That's what red lights are all about. 
It's a prayer stop. <laughs> That's not prayer. It's time for prayer. It's for, to remind you. Now, don't don't close your eyes. <laughs> you the horn from that, that sacred person behind you, the who is quite in the same consciousness that you are. And maybe they think you're on your cell phone having a moment. For example, for example, where we once may have overlooked something in our experience, we begin to place our attention and intention into this area. And through this lens, the label sacred emerges. This was once reserved for meditation cushions and begins to be found in sweeping our porch, brushing our teeth, and yes, maybe even folding our laundry. <clears throat> this shift becomes a catalyst, and before we even realize it, we're moving about our lives in a different way with a constant experience of this sacred awareness. You are the sacred in action. You are a divine idea in the mind of God whose time has come. This sacredness is also in those aspects of life that stir within us the energy of passion and activity. It's my sacred moment too. Yeah. <laughs> This outpicturing of our interactions with others, our care for marginalized communities, our dedication to a cause, our movements towards our own personal transformation, and what we bring and contribute to the collective evolution is this sacredness in action. Maybe you champion the Humane Society because you love animals. Or maybe you're a nature conservative person. Whatever it is, whatever your thing is, make it a, make it a ministry. <clears throat> What's your ministry? What is your ministry? You're a minister here. You don't have to take a bunch of classes like I did and put yourself through a ministerial program. But if that's yours to do, I, come see me. We'll talk. But you're a minister right now of your life. How are you ministering it? How's the entertainment in your ministry? How's the catering doing in your ministry? How's the, how's the bookkeeping going in your ministry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a sacred moment. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look for it. Just move that decimal point over a couple. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. This commitment to the flow of life is essential for our most sacred acts to become sacred. We must see things differently. Repent! Which means just turn around and go the other way. Just, just turn around. Repent! <laughs> turn around. Look at things differently. If something's bothering you, shake it off, take a walk, come back and look at it differently and smile at it. Even if it's the most ugliest thing you've ever seen, go, I know you're in there, God. I'm calling you forth. God, goddess, divine, Christ conscious, whatever you want to call it. To breathe in, and to breathe out and move in ways that speak to our connection with all that is. That is the sacredness in action. Every breath is a sacred breath. Every moment is a sacred moment. So in conclusion, we are invited into the sacredness of all things in all aspects of our lives. The sacred then becomes not a static object or activity or an ideology, but instead it becomes the very action of our everyday life. It becomes a way of seeing ourselves and seeing others and moving about the world. This understanding urges us to ask the question, what has to shift in my awareness to view all things as sacred? 
what has to shift in my awareness to see all things as sacred? It also calls us to a deeper understanding of the divine and its encompassing reach within us. So, this week I invite you to take some mundane task and call the sacred out. <coughs> and in this, you too will be the divine in action. So it is. So it is. So it is. Let's just take a moment and allow that sacred connection to be that vitality of our experience in this moment. So I invite you to bring to the forefront of your consciousness what you believe the divine is to you. What created you? What continues to give you life in every moment? Something powerfully wonderful is happening to you and what you are right now. Bringing to mind our challenges and seeing them as sacred moments transforms the challenge into a triumph transforms the situation from something that used to bother us to something that we live to love. And it is within that transformation that we find ourselves and a new idea is born. How grateful we are as our hearts fill with the gratitude of life itself the miraculous energy is born within us. And soon, the things that used to challenge us are part of our conscious awareness to the next plane of consciousness. You are a miracle. Something wonderful is happening by means of each of us right now. So let's give great thanks as we thrive in this life so that if we are ever given the opportunity to look back, that we smile even at our most challenging challenges and say, yes, I did the best I knew how in that moment, for I know it is all sacred as we affirm the love of the universe in every moment by saying, I'm so Amen. Okay. It's time for our offertory idea about sharing, prospering sharing, sharing affirmation. So if you'd like to put your gift on your heart, let's say this together. God is so generous to all of my brothers and sisters, and so do I.
I share off your toy this morning. From the love of your spiritual energy, these tithes and gifts have been collected. They are evidence of our faith, our belief, and our ability to manifest in this world of form. They do good work in the world. They bless the giver and the receiver. And they allow this, the Grants Path Center for Spiritual Living, to be open and available for those who are choosing to remember who they are and for those who may not know it yet. And for that, this community is blessed and thrives with love, peace, harmony, and abundance. And so it is. All right, it's time for our closing songs. We'd like to stand. Let's sing. Thank you, life! Thank you, life! Have a wonderful